Although snowblowers vary from model to model, they all operate on similar principles. In this video, we will address how snowblower models can differ, how the engine and drive systems operate, and how some common problems can be solved. Most snowblowers are classified as either single stage or dual stage. Single stage models use one auger to collect and throw the snow and work best on snow that is six inches deep or less. Dual stage snowblowers use an auger to collect the snow and an impeller to throw it. These models can handle snow up to one foot deep or more depending on the size of the auger housing. At the heart of every snowblower is the engine. Most single and dual stage models have a four cycle engine. Similar to an automobile engine, four cycle engines run on gasoline and have a separate sump for oil. To start the engine, the ignition key must be inserted or turned into position. Larger engines will have an electric start feature that allows the engine to be turned over by using the key or a button. Smaller engines require the use of a starter rope. As the starter rope is pulled, the starter engages the drive cup on the flywheel and rotates the crankshaft. The crankshaft connects to the piston, which moves up and down within the cylinder as the crankshaft is turned. The rotation of the flywheel and the linear movement of the piston begin the ignition process. The flywheel has permanent magnets built into it, and as it rotates past the ignition coil, a magnetic field is created. The magnetic field induces electricity, allowing the ignition coil to send voltage to the spark plug. Meanwhile, the intake valve opens as the piston travels down the cylinder, creating a vacuum which draws fuel and air through the carburetor where it mixes before entering the cylinder. This action is called the intake stroke of the engine. Next, the compression stroke takes place as the intake valve closes and the piston travels back up to the top of the cylinder. The spark plug now fires and ignites the compressed fuel and air mixture, which forces the piston down, creating the power stroke. The momentum of the spinning flywheel provides enough force to push the piston back up. The exhaust valve opens and the combustion gases exit through the muffler. This is called the exhaust stroke. The engine will continue to run and repeat these four cycles until it is shut off. Most snowblower engines will have a choke, primer bulb, or both to assist with starting in cold weather. The choke will temporarily restrict airflow through the carburetor so more fuel can enter the cylinder. Likewise, a primer bulb draws additional fuel through the carburetor, which enters the cylinder before the engine is started. If the engine does not start or it runs improperly, the most likely cause is a defective spark plug or a restriction in the carburetor that prevents the proper fuel and air mixture from entering the engine. The carburetor can be cleaned, but it often needs to be replaced. Be aware that snowblower engines are designed to use gasoline with no more than 10% ethanol. Gasoline with higher levels of ethanol can be corrosive and attract water, which can cause starting or running problems and may damage the fuel system. You should store the gasoline in a clean, sealed plastic container approved for fuel storage. If equipped, close the vent when not in use and store the container away from direct sunlight. If you anticipate storing the fuel for longer than three months, consider adding a fuel stabilizer when you fill the container. The engine crankshaft extends out the side of the engine and is attached to one or more drive pulleys. On dual stage models, the impeller is also driven by the engine crankshaft. A single stage snowblower will have only one drive pulley. To engage the auger, a spring-loaded idler pulley and belt are used. When the bail arm is engaged, the idler pulley tightens the belt around the drive pulley and the auger rotates. The auger blades, or paddles, collect the snow and throw it out of the chute in one motion. If the belt or paddles wear out, the auger may struggle to throw the snow, and if the belt breaks, the auger will not rotate at all. A dual-stage snowblower often has multiple drive pulleys. One or more belts are used to drive the auger transmission. 
and another belt is used to drive the self-propelled wheels. When the auger drive handle is engaged, a pulley applies tension to the auger drive belts. The transmission engages the auger, which rotates much slower than the impeller. If either side of the auger fails to rotate while engaged, it's likely that the shear bolt has broken. Shear bolts are designed to break if the auger hits a large rock or chunk of ice to prevent damage to the transmission and engine. To operate the self-propel function, the control lever will first need to be set to a designated speed and direction. A drive belt is attached to a drive disc. When the drive handle is engaged, a pulley will apply tension to the drive belt, which rotates the drive disc, engages the friction ring, and drives the wheels. A worn or broken belt, cable, or friction ring will prevent the drive system from engaging properly. Both single and dual-stage snowblowers have a scraper blade on the bottom of the auger housing. This component slides along the ground to assist the auger in collecting the snow. Single-stage models use the scraper to slide directly on the ground to collect snow very close to the surface. Dual-stage models add slide shoes or skids to the sides of the auger housing that allow the user to adjust the position of the scraper blade. If you have a gravel driveway, the scraper should be kept several inches from the ground to prevent rocks from entering the housing. Be aware that scraper blades and slide shoes will wear out over time and will need to be replaced. Since wet snow can clog the auger housing and chute, you can use a broom handle or clearing tool to remove an obstruction, but you should never use your hands. To help prevent the snowblower from getting clogged, a polymer spray like SnowJet can be used to coat the auger and housing. Repair Clinic has a solution for many of the problems you may be experiencing with your snowblower. To find a complete list of compatible parts, you should enter the appropriate model number in our website search engine. Keep in mind that the snowblower and engine usually have separate model numbers. To find parts such as the carburetor or spark plug, you will need to enter the engine model number. To find a replacement scraper blade or drive cable, the snowblower model number will be required. Our site also has an extensive selection of instructional videos to assist you, covering topics like part testing, disassembly, and part replacement. At Repair Clinic, we make fixing things easy.